Yo, what's going on YouTube? It is your boy Ears. Hope you guys are having a great rest of your day, start your day, whatever time it may be. And for this video, we're gonna be going over some methods on how you guys can instantly increase your KD ratios within Black Ops 4. Drop a like on this video if you guys still need a nuclear unlocked on your account. And also comment down below your current KD ratio as well as your PSN or Xbox gamer tags so I can pick some of you guys up and hopefully you guys can unlock a nuclear while playing with me that's something that actually happens rather often and there really is no better feeling no better accomplishment than actually unlocking the final nuclear type of kill streak within a Call of Duty game now for this video we're gonna be discussing some methods on how you guys can double and quite possibly triple your KD ratios currently within Black Ops 4 these are some tips that I've used over the years of playing call of duty that worked for me and hopefully they will work for you now the first thing you guys need to keep in mind when trying to actually increase your kd ratios is you do not actually want to go for a nuclear metal now this seems kind of weird this seems kind of backwards thinking but if you think about it this way it is far better it is far more to your advantage and also you will actually drop more kills per match if you guys are working for each kill streak that you have unlocked currently on your account. So if I'm running the UAV, then I'm running the attack chopper, and I'm also running the strike team, it is more beneficial to me to be working for that one UAV, than working to my attack chopper, and then working for my strike team, and not necessarily thinking about the nuclear metal in the long run. This is kind of what I have done over the years playing, and something that a lot of you guys should probably go ahead and use and take an account and the reason why i'm saying this is because it is a lot less strenuous on your brain and you will not choke and mess up easy gunfights if you are taking every single kill streak baby steps at a time now let me ask you this question what is easier to go for a 30 kill streak or a 10 kill streak now to get a strike team it's rather you know usually 10 kills and you have it unlocked now if you just build for three strike teams subliminally you're gonna be thinking okay well i need to get my strike team once then i go for it again and I go for it again and hey after three strike teams you're at a nuclear medal it's a lot easier to think about it that way as opposed to going to the match and saying okay i need to get 30 kills and then counting every single kill this is a simple mind trick that i feel will actually work out a lot it will drastically increase your gameplay and allow you to actually subliminally go on longer kill streaks without actually thinking about it i want you guys to try out this tip this is probably going to be the biggest tip that i can give you guys right now it kind of seems dumb but at the same time i feel like not a lot of people approach matches like this and if you start approaching matches like this you will find yourself going on longer kill streaks more often and more importantly faster now when i usually go for nuclear medals i don't really never i don't actually like really go for them i don't even notice that i'm on a nuclear streak until like maybe a 20 or a 25 metal pops up on my screen and then i actually might go for it but at the end of the day you get nothing unlocked for getting a nuclear metal so it is far beneficial and far you know greater to your advantage to just go ahead and go for those kill streaks instead of the nuclear metal because you will actually be getting more kills you'll be dying less and you know obviously you're trying to increase your kd ratio and this is a surefire way to do so now, another tip that you guys should probably keep in mind when trying to increase your KD ratio within Black Ops 4 is you guys want to be playing the flips spawns of the maps. Now, you guys see this in a lot of my gameplays. There's a reason why I do this, and that is because the way the spawns work currently within Black Ops 4, there is absolutely no reason to be running from one side of the map back to the other side of the map, kind of in a relay, or like how I like to call it, a running simulator. You guys have probably heard this multiple times on live stream. I'll kind of refer Black Ops 4 to a running simulator because the spawns are constantly flipping and you're constantly running from one side of the map to the other. You need to pick one side of the map that has multiple spawns and patrol that area. It is better to do this because you will actually be able to get more kills, stay alive longer, because you will understand where the spawns are and and there'll be a less chance that you'll actually get shot from the from behind or die to a nonsense specialist kill streak. Now, when I'm playing the map firing range, I usually go ahead and I patrol back bathrooms or I patrol 
top wood by the A flag. These are kind of the best areas, in my opinion, to rock and roll on firing range, just because you can pick them off coming from bathrooms. You can pick them off coming, you know, bottom wood. You can also kind of pick people off coming up back C, but depending on how the spawns are flipping and where your teammates are located, it is the best options to stay by 10 or trailer, as some people like to call it, stay by top wood by A flag, or run bathrooms. These are the best areas to stay at on firing range, and that's the gameplay you guys are watching in the background. I think you guys should probably use this tip because it's going to allow you, like I said, to get more kills because you are not actually running back and forth and you know potentially getting shot from behind. And also, it will minimize the amount of deaths you have because you will not be getting killed by you know nonsense specialists, maybe a mesh bun that's just randomly placed on the map, and you also will have your back towards the edge of a spawn point so you're not really going to be getting shot from the back as much which honestly i feel like a lot of people die from in this game that's kind of like your biggest deaths are just from behind you just never noting never knowing whether they're getting shot from or from like a random specialist kill streak playing like this playing in the back flips area of the map alleviates a lot of these random deaths and you'll find yourself going on longer kill streaks now another trick you guys want to keep in mind when actually trying to increase your KD ratio and stay alive longer and also drop more kills is because you need to actually go ahead and run kill streaks that kind of suit your playstyle. Now, the reasoning why I'm saying this is because some of the streaks within Black Ops 4 personally do not suit the playstyle that I think a lot of people should actually be trying to adapt. Now, if you guys are really trying to increase your KD ratio, Running controllable skills, kill streaks, in my opinion, is not a very good idea. I rarely use the gunship, I rarely use the hellstorm, I rarely use the lightning strike, and the reasoning as to behind this is because I want to stay, you know, fully aware of my surroundings. I want to be fully aware of the spawns, and I feel that running streaks like this kind of take away from that. The hellstorm is probably the only streak that I would run outside of maybe you know the controllable score streaks because it really isn't going to take you away from that much but i personally believe that actually running a controllable score streak is a bad idea running streaks like the uab drone squad sniper's nest attack chopper and also the strike team are probably your best bet when trying to actually increase your kd ratio the score streaks like the sentry gun are also a very good idea to run because if you guys are unaware you can actually block off certain spawns with the sentry gun so if you guys are running an area and you do not want them to spawn in a certain spot you can actually put a sentry gun in that spot and as long as the sentry gun is still active and is not being taken out it's actually going to prevent the enemy team from spawning where you know you don't want them to spawn so i'd recommend trying out running a sentry gun i don't use it normally because i feel the uav is far greater and i think it's a bigger advantage to you as well as your team if you're constantly spamming uavs but you can test this out and use this at your will if you guys want to if you guys are obviously playing in a coordinated party a sentry gun is also pretty decent but in all reality i still believe that a uav having you know the radar or where enemies are at is a better advantage to you and you'll actually allow you to keep you alive longer in game now the final tip that i want to give you guys on how you guys can honestly increase your kd ratio and if you guys can do it i recommend you do it i don't really care what people think about this but playing with a certain amount of players is obviously another way on how you guys can actually stay alive longer get more kills and honestly increase your kd ratio i'm always running with subscribers i usually like to play objective game modes with two to three teammates due to the fact that we all know the team balancing within black ops 4 is absolutely terrible if you are a decent to above average player it's going to stack you with the worst possible teammates and quite honestly that does get annoying because usually what happens is random teammates just run into the enemy spawn flip it they spawn behind you you get shot from behind you spawn in where they spawn and it's just a rinse and repeat process that gets very old and very annoying very fast if you guys are running with players you guys can kind of you know dictate the specialists you guys are running you guys can kind of dictate the maps and you guys can kind of patrol and kind of funnel enemies to a central location. I recommend you guys actually dividing up specialists when you guys are playing together. Someone on your team should always, in my opinion, 
have on Crash, someone should always have on the Recon Specialist, someone should always have on Torque, and someone they should always have on Seraph. These are the best combinations in my possible, in my opinion, that will allow you to control the map and die as little as possible because you will be able to block off spawns, spawn generally where you want to have increased health, get more score per kill as well as having a recon dart and the vision pulse to see enemies that are coming out of maybe a flip spawn or maybe if the spawns flip and nobody really notices it, you can kind of catch them with that recon dart or the vision pulse. These are some tips and tricks on how I feel you guys can instantly double and triple your KD ratio within Black Ops 4. Hopefully these do help you guys out. Like always, man, make sure you guys drop a like on the video. Comment down below your Xbox or PSN gamer tags. Let me know what KD you guys are currently rocking. And if this video does help you guys out, let me know what KD you guys get after using these methods for maybe a couple days to possibly a week. I feel like these tips will help you guys out because they've helped me out in the long run. And these are some things that I've been using and actually applying to my gameplay and playstyle since Call of Duty 4. Hope you guys do enjoy and I'm gonna catch you guys in the next video, man. Deuces. <sighs> I already took that shit out. It's fucking damn system intrusion bullshit. My fucking radar bag. I died one off a of nuclear again two games in a row by a kid with ghost cold blooded. Yes! Love it! One off a of nuclear. Oh yeah, it's an auger DMR. It's just gods here. Literally was one off a of nuclear and fucking die. I could have had the 100 KD in this bitch too. I could have had an 100 I could have had an 100 KD. That's annoying. Oof, like my mindset going for nukes in this game is like so different compared to the other games. You get nothing for the nukes, so like not that big of a deal to even go for them.
Like this time of World War II, I think I had like probably triple the amount of D the V2s. Then I have nukes. And like, and like it was a process to get V2s because you have to go ahead and prestige the divisions and shit like that. So it's like, the amount of V2s you'd pro I lost in the beginning of the game not having my divisions leveled up. I think I still had more V2s at this point than I have nukes. Just because I don't go for them. I mean, if you got to call something in, I'd go. I maybe I'd go for him. You get nothing. To, you don't got nothing to call in. What's the point? You know, like they don't know that you. They don't know that they got nuked. <laughs> oh yeah, let me not chase that. Pro tip for me to you, when you see like five guys, like... Oh, is that a guy back there? No. Yeah, I need one. You need one. You need one for the calling card. Then it's just like, oh well, who cares? Nuked out. Need one for the calling card. Oh well, who cares? You know? That's how I'm like on this game. Like, they definitely should, honestly, like, I don't think they should release a call. I don't know about you guys, but we don't need no more Call of Duties that they don't have, like, a callable nuke to get at, like, 25, 30 kills. I mean, if it don't got a callable nuke, like, what the fuck y'all doing? While wow, they all left. What's up, Panda? What's up, Panda? Thirty-one. 